Hi, how are you all doing? It's Ben from EQL Networks and Security. Today we're going to be looking at Darwa's latest 6 megapixel turret network camera. You know, this is camera is a very popular camera and it's actually replacing the last model which is the 3641 series. Um, basically it's got new chipsets in it. So it's a great all-round camera, perfect for almost an environment and very good value for money. So the part number for this camera is going to be listed here. Now let's get right into this. So the specs of this camera are it's a 6 megapixel 1.2 inch CMOS sensor and it's got excellent low light performance, you know, producing high definition uh, video quality. So being a 6 megapixel camera, it has a resolution of uh, 3072 by 2048 and can be at 25 frames or 30 frames per second. It also has a built-in IR LED with a maximum IR distance of 30 meters and also has a 256 gigabit micro uh, SD card slot um, so you can put in extra storage there as well. Plus it's also got that built-in mic. So let's look at some features here. So it's got the intelligent detection like intrusion, tripwire, and also supports the accurate detection of uh, vehicle and human. So apparently this has been upgraded from the last model. Also has additional features, you know, such as your standard motion detection, privacy masking, scene changing, uh, like auto detection, network di uh, di disconnection, uh, even things like IP conflict, illegal access, and even voltage detection. So it's got a fair bit into this, this camera. Other than those features, it's got WizSense. So WizSense is a, it's basically AI and allows you to identify a target by filtering humans and vehicles. Uh, in this particular case, it's got a higher level of accuracy. Um, so you're not getting notified, um, you know, when events that you don't want to be notified are, it's actually giving you a true event. So let's see how these Dory specs compare. Uh, according to the specs of the camera, it's able to detect at 63.6 .6 meters, observe at 25.4, uh, recognize at 12.7 and identify at 6.4. So before we dive into the performance of this camera, if you're new to this channel and like what you see here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. If you have any other questions or comments, don't be afraid to hit us up in that comment sections below. So enough of this talking, let's go see how this camera performs in day and night. So here we go. So this is actually shot in a late afternoon with the sun setting behind. Um, but overall, it's, it's a great picture. Uh, it's crisp, it's clear. Colors are, uh, are quite natural uh, on this point. But we'll start off with doing a bit of a close-up uh, walk test. Uh, there you go, you can see it's detected a person. That's why it's got the blue box coming up. And if we freeze it there, uh, you can pretty much still see colors, facial features, uh, and everything that's going on. So on this next step, we'll, uh, I'll basically go and do a, a walk by. And here I am. Once again, you can see the box gets picked up, detected. And then if we freeze it there, uh, you can actually see uh, colors once again, tones. Uh, you can make out some facial features um, at that particular distance as well. So what we'll do now is we'll go and do a bit of a zoom test. So on the left here, uh, you can see the car number plate is very clear. It's pretty sharp, uh, very sharp image. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll zoom into the center. Uh, once again, number plates are not super clear, but very legible. And you can make out uh, numbers and letters at that particular distance, which is about 18 to 20 meters away. And just over here, uh, once again, clearly see the number plate, uh, make a model of the vehicle as well. So. Overall, it's, it's a very good uh, image. And just we'll test into the tree line here. Uh, once again, not really going to make anything out there uh, at that particular distance. Just more for observing something going on. So now we'll get into the nighttime shot. So this is actually with the IR on. And then what we'll do is we'll go into a bit of a walk test. Excuse all the little bugs flying around. Uh, here we go. Once again, detected there's a person. Uh, and I'll come up to a probably about four meters away from the camera. And we freeze it there. Uh, this particular case, I haven't modified the small IR, so it hasn't adjusted the intensity. Uh, but particularly there, you're not going to see anything if that's uh, left unattended. Next, we'll do our walk by test. Uh, once again, you see the blue box detect person. We freeze it there. Uh, you're not really going to make anything out at that particular distance. Um, 
you know, you just know something's happening, but you do notice there's not a lot of ghosting uh, happening, um, but still at that particular distance, you're not gonna be notified or, or see basically any facial features. Now we'll do a bit of a zoom. So we go on the left here. Uh, not really going to be seeing anything here with the IR reflecting off the number plate. Pretty much you're only going to kind of see what type of car it is. Uh, jump into the center. Once again, not going to be able to see anything uh, at that particular distance. And then we'll just zoom in over on the van. Uh, same thing, just with the number plates and the IR, you're not going to see anything. But this particular case, you can make out the, the make of the, the car. Now we'll zoom up into the tree line. Yeah, nothing up there as well. So it's just purely for um, seeing if something's going on and observing. So next shot here. So this is something we're doing a bit different now. So I actually turn the IR off. Um, you can see the image is also, it's slightly different. Everything's a lot more clearer, like you're not getting any of reflection off the number plates and, and so forth. Uh, but we do the walk test. See it's picked the person up. Like you can see that ghosting happening. Uh, and then if we freeze it there, funny enough, you actually see a bit more detail in this particular case than we did with the IR on. Next we'll do is we'll do a walk by. You can see that ghosting happening. Uh, and notice how it picked up the person uh, detection a little bit late. And if we freeze it there, uh, you won't make anything out at that particular distance, even with the IR off. Now what we'll do is we'll go and do a zoom. So here on the left, so this particular place, now you can actually see some of the lettering of the number plates. It's not super crisp or super clear, uh, but you can make out letters. We'll zoom into the middle. Once again, you can't really make it out. You can kind of see some lettering, but not clearly identifiable. And then we'll zoom in on the van. This one, we could actually make out the letters a lot better on the number plate, but you can't see what the maker model is this time. And then finally, we'll zoom into the tree line. Let me get that right. Uh, and once again there, it's just purely for observing something's going on. Now, what are my thoughts on this camera? I'd have to say that this camera, along with its specs and AI capabilities, makes it a great camera overall. You know, it allows for different details of, of different footage at different times of the day. It could be used in a multitude of different ways and in many environments. You know, one of the main features when you enable that WizSense, you know, due to the AI, it'll only notify you when you're a person or vehicle is detected. You know, there's nothing worse than getting a notification on your mobile from a tree moving or a bog, bug, bog, bog, bug flying in front of your camera. Its AI functionality allows you to set up tripwires and intrusion zones, basically to help protect your property from unwanted intruders. Now for the nighttime footage, you know, it's pretty good and doesn't have as much ghosting, say, compared to other cameras. In saying that, though, it'd still be pretty hard to identify any facial features. Basically, you won't find a more capable or feature-rich camera than this one. You know, if you're looking for a camera that can help protect your property in all conditions, but you don't want to break the bank, then this camera is absolutely for you. Overall, it's a good camera and very good value for money. On that note, that's it for this video. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit us up in that comment sections below for any other questions you may have. At EQL, we're always here to help and support your business.